Oh my God, the stream is live. It's Friday. The stream is live. I just saw some, oh my God, Tim, your coffee maker is broke. Everybody pray for Tim. Pray for Tim. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tim. If he can't get boned this morning, there's a problem. It's not That's good. Not good. Okay. So you guys, um, little Theo has a hot spot on his armpit. Oh it's right on his little pity, pity pet armpit. And so I had to put some coat defense on there to make you better, <laughs> little bomb. So you guys should visit coatdefense.com and use promo code chicks when you check out. Save 15% off your entire order because that crap works. It does. And it makes your little pitties feel better. <laughs> yeah. Theo likes it. He likes it. He'll roll over and he's like, Mama, put more on me. And so I do. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Miriam Burkett, thank you so much. She says, good morning, ladies, and happy Friday. Can't wait to see you both again in Indy. I know. That's going to be so much fun. You guys, we've got like three months. Isn't that right? I know. We're I know. three we months away. What we're doing on that Friday. Like we have so much to do that we have not, we've yeah. just been dropping the ball. It's because we got to wait until after spring break when our minds are sort of you know, don't stress back out. in action. Don't, don't start yeah. stressing out yet. I'm just not. wait. We'll stress out after spring break. But right now, exactly. there's no stress. Except for Tim's <laughs> copy maker. I'm a little stressed out about that. That is stressful indeed. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> That's a little stressful. Mm -hmm. Um, Can we just take a moment and wish... Uh-oh, somebody's saying my mic isn't working. That's what okay, I just saw on. too. Is your mic not working? What's I, How did you not know that? I've been talking to you for the past half hour. I feel like your mic has been working. I don't, I don't do I need to like you, put my other headphone in? I feel like you're Okay, not thing. Okay, now you're um, like um Oh no. Why is it that I never notice this stuff and you guys do? Because I can always hear her. Notice this. Okay. So I'm going to, I have to go and unplug it and replug it in. Okay. So just talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I can talk. We can talk amongst ourselves. Okay. Hello. You guys, I'm going to start reading some comments and seeing how everybody is. She sounds like she's in a tunnel. Yeah. She kind of does sound like she's in a tunnel. But I, listen, I don't notice this stuff because I talked to her and I can hear her just fine. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. All right. So what are you guys doing this weekend? Everybody tell me what you're doing. I'm going to Round Top. Do you guys know what Round Top is? It's a big antique show in Round Top, Texas. It's like gajillions of people just ascend upon Round Top. And that's what I'm going. I'm going to look at dead people's stuff and I'm going by myself. So if anybody wants to meet me in Round Top, I'll meet you there. I'll be there by myself. I'll be looking for you guys. Are you taking a long time? What are you doing? Yes, Gwen has recovered from all of her orthodontal stuff, from all of her wisdom teeth pulling. She was uh, very, very swollen for the first probably three or four days because she had an extra tooth right here that she had to have pulled. It was like a shark tooth, an extra shark tooth that she had pulled. And she looked like she had, uh, well, I, is it Kylie Jenner? She had Kylie Jenner uh, lips for like three days. And I said, honey, people pay for that. She goes, mama, I don't like this at all. So she hated her big, you know, Kylie Jenner lips and her swollenness, but it finally subsided and she's back to normal. So yesterday she looked like a normal Gwen again, which we were very grateful for. And she was too. So she's back to normal today. Very, very happy about that. Dang it. It's just not working at all. It's not. No. And, and, but I can't sound like this cause I can hear an echo so I have to unplug it again and retry it. Okay. So just keep doing what you're okay. doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're still talking about other things. All right. What else is going on? What are you guys doing? I want to hear some more stuff about what you're doing this weekend. Oh, am I, I've been to round top three times. I love round top. I'm a big antique person. You guys huge antique. And it used to be that my husband and my daughter would go with me, but now they've completely lost interest. So I'm like, fine, I'll go by myself, which is what I'm doing. Somebody asked how my puppy's doing. Well, Theo, if, if if you're talking about Theo, he's not quite a puppy. He's, let's see, how old is he? He just a little bit over a year and he's doing great. He's fitting in. The only thing about Theo, you guys, is he's a runner. He's like a Houdini and he's a runner, which is part of the reason I think he ended up on our property to begin with is because he likes to escape things. 
which is why he ended up all bloody on our property and we ended up taking him, but he will escape. So we've got a GPS tracker on him and one of those, uh, what do they call those? Those little round things that tracks like a tile. Is that what it is? We have one of those on him too. It's like a little Apple ID thing. So we have, both, it's like, Mock will make fun of me because he's got this giant, like it looks like a, a seat belt as a collar on him. And then my husband has a giant GPS tracker on him. So if he gets like within just at the end of our property, if he goes to the end of our property, we get a notification. And so, you know, he's, we track him, we track him hard. And so I want to make sure that he never leaves our property. Um, and then he's also chipped. So he's got like three different mechanisms on him that we can keep track of that dog. That dog is never going to leave me. I swear. So anyways, but yes, he's doing great. He's fitting in. He's just more of an outdoor. I want to like protect your property and watch the livestock kind of dog. Whereas our other two dogs are more indoor dogs. So he's acclimating. He's more of a outdoor dog than an indoor dog, but he's fitting in. He's doing great. Round top, Rhonda round top is a humongous antiques fair. Like it's gigantic. It, it, it covers a couple different um, towns in Texas. You have to, it takes days, sometimes weeks for people to get through the whole thing. Um, but I'm a big antiquer and that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So very excited about that. I'll just go for the day. I won't be able to make it through the whole thing, but I'll just go to a couple barns and stuff like that and look at stuff and try to try to get some dead people stuff. That's what I'm going to be doing. So. Um, I can't. Okay. Well, we'll just have to do deal with what you've got. Um, I, it's cause the mic is recognized, but it's not actually, as soon as I turn it on, I can't hear you. So you can't, no sense. okay, but you can hear me now, right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. And, okay. um, no, it, I can't reboot you guys. It's not, it's not that like I've already unplugged the, how does it sound to people? I'm so worried. Okay. I, Patrice says you can hear us. Oh yeah. I can hear, hear you. I can hear you. It's, I mean, it's fine. It just sounds a little, um, like what's, what's the word? Like a little more, uh, like echoey, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll just, we're just going to make do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Everybody can deal. Right. right. We're fine. We're good. Right. I mean, we've I had know worse. I'm like muffled. <laughs> I'm talking it like sounds, this. It's not, it's not listening to me. So <laughs> it's, it's echoey and muffled is kind of what it is, but it's fine. We can hear you. It's fine. <sighs> I don't know what's a wrong with this mic, but it just decided to not work today. This so. week has been a week, hasn't it? God, my Getting internet, I mean, my internet is back, mm -hmm. but like the, the mic is completely borked and I don't know why. <laughs> so my husband's looking at things. I've unplugged it and replugged it in a whole bunch and it won't. It's and it like the lights are on, it's working. But as soon as I go to click it, I can't hear you. You turn off, which makes no sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we're All gonna, right. it's fine. It, Everybody's I, saying it's fine and I'm just going to deal. So Brian thinks it's the Chinese. I blame the Kardashians because that's who I always. I blame. should. Yes, I think it's. I think that's a fair. I think, I it's, think fair it's to blame them. I think it's the Kardashians, <laughs> so it's good. Okay, we'll figure it out. Um, what I was trying to say before I realized that I sound like crap is that today is Dr. John Glenn's birthday, and he and his wife Ellie are good friends of the chicks on the right, and so we just wanted to make sure. Hopefully, he's listening that uh he has a very 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 happy 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 birthday today happy birthday happy birthday dr glenn happy birthday to dr glenn mm -hmm. <laughs> and kimberly clark thank you kimberly clark says wish me luck turning 51 on sunday so happy birthday to kimberly clark as well it's a big birthday day um and if you are celebrating anything you should maybe consider using omaha steaks in your celebration Think about that. OmahaSteaks.com is where you can get site-wide savings right now, 50% off <laughs> site-wide. So if you've never tried Omaha Steaks yet, now's a great time because everything's 50% off. And when you use code CHICKS at checkout, you save an extra $30 off, which is huge. So if you haven't tried Omaha Steaks or if you have and you already know how delicious everything is at Omaha Steaks, um, Now's a great time to stock up because everything is uh, on such super, super sale. Plus, when you use code CHICKS and get $30 off, you're really, really saving a ton, tons of money. So OmahaSteaks.com is where you want to go to get your steaks. Um, can I share my screen for a moment and show everybody a disease that is so crazy to me that I just learned about today? A disease? Yeah. 
Yes. And listen, I am not, you know, I've said things and people get so mad when I say what my favorite diseases are <laughs> because they're just like, that's so awful. How dare you? But I, I do accidentally have favorite diseases and they include Tourette's and narcolepsy. Of all the diseases that are those out are, there, those, those are, are the good least ones. lethal, mm -hmm. and they are just, they can sometimes be kind of funny, right? Yeah. Like, they, they can, can be a little bit funny. They can be kind of funny, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what people think, right? Right. You guys may totally. not say it out loud. I'm mm -hmm. the one that says it out loud. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, I came across this new disease. You guys, this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. I have to share my screen. It's called demon face syndrome. This is a real thing, okay? Let me show you. So what happens is if you are a person that has demon face syndrome, if you see a picture of somebody or you see like uh, them on paper, everything is fine. But in person, when you see people, they look like demons like the picture demonstrates. So whoa, 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 wait, okay. So it's how you I, perceive something. It's how your brain perceives somebody. Yes. 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 Is that the craziest thing ever? Okay. So if somebody looks normal, like you look normal to everybody else, but to me, you look like a demon. That's what this disease is. Everybody looks like demons. Yes. Oh my God. That's, I know that's horrible because you would, you would just think everybody looks insane. Right. Oh it, but, but you know that they don't cause you know, you've got like oh this thing God. cause you, but Carrie, can you imagine having Carrie, no Carrie just said that MF -er isn't real. <laughs> That's exactly what she could have had that. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my God. Isn't that hilarious? So, yeah. I mean, of course, no disease is fun. You know, when I'm no. saying that, I mean that with all the love in my heart, but this is an actual thing. And of all the things that, I mean, I'm just saying out of all the diseases out there, this is a pretty crazy one. You it's have a, to admit. And one of the, it's probably the craziest. That's nuts. Oh my God. And look at the name. Look at the like actual name for it. It's prosopometamorphopsia. Fopsia, yeah. Uh-huh. Pros oh my god. Prosopo metamorphopsia. P M O. Yeah. And somebody said, Hey, let's name it this ridiculously long name to make it even worse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh Isn't that crazy? Anyway, I just could not know that alone. I thought this that, is a this is a really nuts. interesting thing. <laughs> so. Completely nuts. Wow. Um, also, before we get to all the news, fantastic news that we discovered this morning, and that is that miraculously, we do have the audio of our interview with Mike Rowe from mm -hmm. years and years and years and oh my years, God. years ago. I started crying when I started he. <laughs> I did. Mm -hmm. And it's when he sang opera to us and it was just a, it was such a treat to talk to him. So like I promised, I'm figuring out a way to like get it. There's four clips and I'm schmooshing them. And then I want to make sure that it's in a format that will be recognized by our Facebook insiders group and our local supporters group. But I'm going to post it if I can figure out the right format to get it uploaded. I'm going to post the full thing for um, insiders and supporters because it is just, we're so thrilled that we have it. Oh my God. Um, and would love to share it. So, yeah, it's so good. Yeah. And it just catapulted me back to our radio days. And it just made me, oh my gosh, when we were young. <laughs> so fun. And then I found, I found an old ad read that we were recording. <laughs> My God, you guys. And she has to share it. She has to. I have to. It's like behind the scenes of us doing an ad and how ridiculous we were. It's, oh, my God. <laughs> we're so serious. We're consummate professionals all the time. <laughs> I'll share that one, too, because that that one, <laughs> that, just, was, that was great. Yeah. That was absolutely great. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's get into some actual news. Okay, because we're 15 minutes in the show now, and half of it's been me trying to figure out a mic. So... Um, <laughs> let's get right into things. So we've talked about this, before. you know, Monday is the deadline for Trump to come up with all this, this money for his bond. It's not sounding like he has the money. Letitia James is like on the prowl to, to seize as much or, of his stuff as she can. It's absolutely gross the way that they're coming after him. Um, and so now what you're going to hear a lot of is Democrats trying to convince you that Trump is going to put our entire country at risk by going to foreign adversaries to get the money. So he's they're basically suggesting that he's going to call up Kim Jong-un and be like, hey, dude, can you loan me some money? I'll fly you here to the White House if you want or whatever it is. 
this is what they want. They're planting that seed, right? They want us all to believe that Trump would mm -hmm. jeopardize national security in order to pay off this loan so or this bond. And so just to give you an example, uh, Alyssa Farah on CNN saying exactly Where that. is he going to turn? There is a possibility he's going to look to foreign. Um, it could be adversaries. It could be individuals within nations that are our adversaries to lend him money if he's not able to secure loans here. And I think that's a very real possibility that folks need to be thinking about in the, the broader context of this. Uh, that's Just like we already owe China money? Kind of like that? Kind of like we already owe them money. I mean, seriously. It's it's so interesting how these people have like this is this this plan that they've they've thought up and they're like, OK, everybody, because, you know, this is this is a plan. You know, this is this the new narrative that they're going to run with because the media, they're all in cahoots. Right. I hate that word cahoots, but <laughs> you can think of. But they're all together. They got this plan. They're like, OK, and go. This is what they're going to run with now because this there always is a narrative and they all kind of like parrot the same thing. And this is what they're going to run with. And it's like, seriously, like we don't already owe money to China. Like the Bidens aren't ready, are already not taking money from Ukraine. Like I'm not, I'm not, excuse, I'm not saying that Trump is going to do this. I'm just saying that they're so like clutching their pearls about this. Like, oh my God, he's going to take money from a foreign adversary. Your guy's already doing it. Like <laughs> right. again, again, with the gaslighting, I cannot like we're and the projection. Right. It's it's crazy. Like we just went through a hearing where they they showed us receipts of your guy doing exactly what you're accusing Trump of going to do. I can't. I'm over <laughs> it. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile, CNN did a whole segment about Letitia James potentially going after Mar-a-Lago because it's worth so much money. And it's like they're saying these things without even recognizing that they are total hypocrites because this whole case was about him overvaluing right. the properties. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, my God, Mar-a-Lago is worth so much money. Yeah, it always has been, you crazy people. Oh this was God. the segment on CNN. At least 30 days to get any of these properties sold. Um, but the property that you alluded to, Mar-a-Lago, uh, potentially, that could be something that could be sold quickly. I think the valuation is something in the hundreds of millions. Oh and my God. I think there could be a buyer for something like that. Oh and that God. would be literally, if you're talking about what? doing that between now and Monday, that's picking up the phone, calling someone, and then literally writing a check. Yeah, I mean, what? there could be plenty of international people who want to buy that property. I mean, there's properties that are priced at 150 and 200 million that are nearby that. What? And Palm Beach yeah. is like the NVIDIA. NVIDIA, excuse oh. me, of real estate. It's just it? shot up like a rocket. Is and people it? do want to live, live there. They've moved there. So I think that what? would be the best case scenario uh, as to proper I, if he's trying to sell quickly. I would encourage that. So okay. all right, now that's 240 million estimated. I mean, who knows? You know, he's a desperate seller in this case. Someone picks oh up the phone and makes God. that call this week. So I don't know what it'd be. That's still. I cannot. Oh, isn't it incredible? Is it like right. Of what it would be. Like mm -hmm. two days ago, they were saying, oh, it's worth like 18 million. Like two days ago, this is what they're pick a lane, CNN. Right, I, cannot, I can't with these people. It's unbelievable mm -hmm. that they are th that they're just shamelessly talking about it like that when the whole case was based on him overvaluing right. his assets. So they're now are they, they overvaluing? Is CNN overvaluing it? What <laughs> the actual f? Can we sue CNN for fraud? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's sue him. Somebody sue him. <laughs> Uh, G. Bush Peterson, thank you very much. Uh, G. Bush Peterson says, love to you girls. I am 68 today. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> Laura Kate Baker, thank you. She says, happy Friday, working from home, paying bills, and having Chick-fil-A with the Chicks community. Ooh, I hope that, that you are good. also getting boned at the same time. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> Uh, Kario23, thank you, says North Korea makes better $100 bills than the Treasury does and dumps billions a year onto the world market. Um, I still don't think that that's a wise place to mm -hmm. seek help from. So mm -hmm. just saying. <laughs> uh, Michelle Boyd, thank you. Michelle says, good morning, ladies. Sending just because you both brighten my day. Finding you ladies has been a wonderful blessing. Thank that's you, so Michelle. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> So nice. And Queen B, thank you. Queen B says, so do I have this straight? It depends on the narrative as to how much Trump stuff is worth. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Is it? No, it depends on the Democrat narrative, on the liberal narrative. I mean, it's, we're living in bizarro world. Totally. I mean, and it just gets more bizarro with each passing moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's out of control. 
Um, yesterday, we were pretty excited to record another episode of our weekend podcast with Zach Abraham from Bulwark Capital Management, and very, very excited to also let you guys know that if you're interested, you know, every so often he does these <laughs> webinars for folks. Um, and so there's a webinar that's coming up. This is a 2024 Outlook webinar. It is happening on Thursday, March 28th at 3.30 Pacific time, which means... 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, I think. <laughs> um, I think that's right. Yep. And um, so he's saying basically that 2024 obviously has the potential to be a very, very wild ride. I don't think that comes as a surprise to anyone. Um, but the point of that is, you know, everyone should be making sure that their financial portfolios are protected to the extent possible. That's what Zach is all about. So it's always a really, really great idea to sign up for his webinars. They do uh, fill up quickly. And so you'll want to go to Know Your Risk radio.com and get your spot secured for that. You'll also get a free investment risk review when you go to knowyourriskradio.com. Um, and we love Zach. He's shamelessly conservative, which is why mm -hmm. we appreciate the fact that he is in this world <laughs> helping us all make sense of it. Uh, investment advisory services are offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Investments involve risk and are not guaranteed. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Please check out and learn from Zach's expertise, knowyourriskradio.com. Did I get everybody? No, I did not get everybody. Lisa Samaniergo. Lisa Samaniergo. Thank you very, very much for that super sticker. I hope I did not butcher your name completely. Um, Kamala was speaking at an event yesterday, and I don't need to, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, you guys, she continues to be unburdened even I, yesterday i cannot with like how how is she doing this it, it, we're being punked at this point we have to be this is insane <laughs> it feels like we are but she's so earnest and sincere in being as unburdened as she is um and then she goes on to just do like a total word salad so please enjoy it has always been about the ability to see what can be unburdened <laughs> by what has been what uh, how so, is i'm i'm really excited about yes. our work. of course she's I'm excited i'm very excited about our work because we are showing that these were oh not just really good ideas we are demonstrating that when we have <laughs> leadership in the highest offices in the land including in the white house who believe in what we can do and then when we push to make it so it allows other people who perhaps before couldn't imagine it to now see how it works and we are building then the movement in such a substantial way in terms of those who are coming into the rooms to be a part of what we know is in the best interest of obviously our country but our world what did she just say <laughs> what did she just say Crystal said that she, she is the zombie apocalypse. And I could not agree <laughs> with that more. She is. I, honestly, I don't think she's a real person at this point. That MFR is not real. <laughs> she's not real, you guys. <laughs> Mother Effer is not real. I'm telling you right now. She is unburdened <laughs> by what has been. I just, it's, um, it's unbelievable. It, it's like, remarkable. It's believable, but also unbelievable. It, it, Every just, time she does it, I just, I can't, I'm stunned by it. Yeah. And, 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 just, and the administration's like, oh yeah, I'm burdened <laughs> by what has been. Keep doing it, Kamala. Keep doing it. It's extraordinary. Wow. Um, Biden, uh, her running mate, what is also out on the campaign trail. <laughs> and when I say that, I mean that he's going to very, very tiny venues with ones of people, right? Like I mean, it's, Mexican these are not well attended things. He's going to Mexican right. restaurants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was having some, there was a woman that was going to introduce him. She's like at the little, she's got the microphone. She's in the middle of introducing him. And you can see on his face that he gets distracted. And then you see that he's distracted by a baby and he's doing his weird creepy Joe thing with the baby. And then he comes back to explain his distraction. Together but we know that there is still work to be done, <laughs> oh which God. is why we are going to organize <laughs> like so never weird. before and ensure we are turning out the vote. <laughs> and we know no that 
you know, there's so much at stake and that Donald Trump continues oh to pose a threat in so many ways. He continues <laughs> to spew racist <laughs> rhetoric and really? to devalue our community. Mm. But we know that the president's vision values his commitment to faith, <laughs> family, and hard work are what's going to continue to propel the Latino vote this election cycle. Oh, my God. That baby, that baby's like, hell well, nah. Folks, no. I have to tell you straight up, I like you all, but I couldn't resist that little baby. <laughs> oh, my God. I bet you could. Well, first of all, I want to thank I bet you could you. not resist that little baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a thumbs up on your screen. There is a thumbs up. How did that happen? I, have I did no nothing. idea. I have no clue. <laughs> I did nothing. No I did not create idea. that. He's looking Normally at that baby. I have to do this to do it. And he's, then it'll happen. But like, I didn't looking, do it. He's like going over the baby going, I wear diapers too. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. James Heinzman. Thank you. James says, I'll take my salad with blue cheese. <laughs> Kamala, meaning mm -hmm. Kamala's uh, salad. Mm -hmm. Teresa Raimundo, thank you. Teresa says, how does The View do it? They managed to find the worst example of Republicans for their show. Wow. Uh, I'm assuming you mean Alyssa and Anna, um, who are both not Republicans. Republicans. They're not yeah, Republicans. Exactly. They just say they're Republicans so they can get on the show, but they're not actually Republicans. Yeah. And Joe Heron, thank you. Joe says, got boned for the very first time yesterday. And it was good. Congratulations. I bet it was good. Right? He was deflowered. <laughs> I think it was Joe, a girl Joe, because it was just J-O. It was oh. Joe like you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Joe like me, like Amy Joe. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm totally, I'm, I, I, apologies if I've misgendered you <laughs> in any way. <laughs> it's the worst crime ever. <laughs> um, speaking of Biden, he was on Univision, uh, the radio, some radio show thing on Univision. And he made the most unbelievable claim. I'm just going to let you hear it. It's clear to you that, now, first of all, I tell you the truth. And uh, I'll not be facetious when I say that. <clears throat> I've never been the fact checked by the, you in the press. Oh. Now, this guy is misrepresented so much. Never been fact checked. He's never, ever been He's fact -checked. never been fact-checked. Never. Mm -hmm. Which is oh going to get fact-checked. <laughs> that <laughs> that statement's going to get fact-checked immediately. It's so funny. It's just yeah. such an obvious... Like, it's... I mean, why lie about something that's so easily disproven? Why, why? lie about... Why lie about lying? Why would you... Because <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. Oh my and God. also, he I is mean, on... on. He is on the, the Pander McPander Pants tour of 2024 when it comes to Hispanic people. Like mm. he is on the struggle bus. I mean, is he not? He's, is it so obvious how pandery he is right now? He's like, they don't like me. That community doesn't like me. So let's, I'm going to go to every Mexican restaurant. I'm going to go on Univision and talk to, <laughs> uh, talk to all the, the Hispanic people and try to get them. Cause I'm desperate because those people are so disappointed in me and they are because what yeah. there were like 10 people at that Mexican restaurant, dude. It's, I mean, it's not just Hispanics. Black people are also very disappointed in him because I've been watching video after video of people going, oh, hell no, we're not voting for him. This guy's a loser. We're going to vote for Trump because you're not better off. And I know we have a video coming up about that, but they're not better off in the past three years than they were. They were, they were way better off with Trump as pre president. Yeah. So. Well, and that that's exactly what's next. So uh, Joe Biden's team, I mean, obviously Joe Biden didn't do this, but his team put out an anti-Trump video. And I, I don't know who's responsible for it. I will say they get points for jumping onto a weakness of Trump's um, in a very, I think, effective way, playing up to their base, obviously, but also playing to people who are very disappointed that, with Trump about his COVID response and more so about his current response to how he did during COVID. There's a lot of people, myself included, who are just like, Trump, would you please shut up about how the great job that you did during COVID and own some of your mistakes? Because without owning mistakes, there's never going to be accountability for the Fauci's of the world. Right. Um, and so to that end, I think this ad is pretty effective. 
And then I see the disinfectant. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside? Or and on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your response to this crisis? I'd rate it a 10. I think we've done a great job. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Yeah. No, I don't take responsibility at all. We're doing, I think, really, really well. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. Yeah, but didn't more people die under Biden? I actually don't know uh, the stats on that. I have no idea. And then, I can't you know, say either way. And then if, if, you know, if he wants to go toe to toe on, are you better off? Cause that, that was in response to him saying, are you better off, um, under, under Biden than you were under Trump? And they played this video, Biden, actually, I say Biden, his team put this out on Twitter, right? They, they put this ad out on Twitter. And so, I mean, really people were slamming him on Twitter. Oh, like, I'm sure. Prices are 20% higher across the board. Gas prices are double. Mortgages are double. Electricity is up 25%. You got 10 million illegals that have poured across the border. Fentanyl is the number one killer. We're paying for other people's wars <laughs> when we are actually being invaded. Everything sucks. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a neat little ad that he put out. But that was, we're past this. You know what I mean? It's like, I get it. He didn't handle a lot of things very well and he should take responsibility, but I'm living in the now, you know, I'm never going back there. If they want to do another, if they want to, if the government wants to push another COVID again, a lot, half of us are going to be like, <laughs> yeah, we're opting out. We're opting out. We're totally <laughs> opting out. If you want to, if you want to have mask mandates again, you bet you got another thing coming. Cause half of the country is going to be like, here's my middle finger. We're not doing it. We're not doing it because we're smarter than that now. We've lived through it. We're not doing it. We will not comply. So, I mean, we're in a different place now. And a lot of us are fed up with the, the economics of this country, you know, yeah. just a, and the that, crime and the invasion, right. all of those things. We're, that's, that's, we're way worse off. That's where I'm living. I'm not living right. in COVID anymore. I'm past it. I'm living in the here and the now, which is all the stuff that Biden Harris don't want to talk about. So they can keep living in COVID times. I'm not in that place anymore. I'm I'm living in a different, I guess, a different time. I would imagine that some of these people here are living in that too. I get it. I mean, I think that he should probably own it. Trump should own up to some of the stuff. And I would love to see Fauci held responsible. I would yeah. love that. If I'm, you know, I would love that because I think he's right. a, just an evil little troll. And I and it makes me sick that I have to pay for his freaking retirement. I can't believe that I'm doing that. But, you know, I, I, there are there's a lot of there are a lot of fires happening right now and they have nothing to do with COVID. Well, I, I think if I were advising Biden and his team, I would be like, do more of this because you certainly don't have a record to run on. Right. A good one anyway. Do more of this. And then I, if I were advising Trump, I would say, stop doing the things that, that you're doing about COVID. Like th this is his weakness and he needs to either own it or shut his pie hole about it. Either one. I'm fine with either at this or point. Or he could, he needs to also arm himself with data, you know, because I do think that deaths were also up, you know, after Trump left when it came to COVID. So, you know, Trump, if they're going to debate, Trump needs to be ready to debate right. on this subject. He just needs to be ready, you know, and I think he could do okay. He can hold his own on the subject if he's ready, if his team prepares him, he'll be all right. Yeah. If he allows himself to be prepared by something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if Biden ever agrees to debate, which he likely won't. Yeah. I just, I'm not seeing I, that happen. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Especially if there is a third candidate that makes a debate stage. And we're talking, of course, about RFK Jr., who Jen Psaki and other Democrats are starting to get really worried about. Yes, yeah, and are. all sorts of other things. Right. But I will say, Mika, I, I was nodding along as Tom was just talking. I think this mm -hmm. is the biggest challenge there there is unquestionably trump has a broad support in his base as we've just been yeah. discussing and we've seen that play out in the primary that's the only piece though we know at this point he has problems among independents and problems with an expanded electorate but these third party candidates are a huge 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 problem and there's mm -hmm. a number of them if you look at rfk jr it's the name recognition issue as tom was just talking about and there are still states in this country uh, obviously i mean georgia is one of them i will name where the kennedy name is beloved 
right? Where people may just not right. still, where they may just not know a lot about the fact that he is an anti-vaxxer who's a conspiracy theorist. My they God. don't know that yet. So this is something, there is an aggressive effort that the campaign has been working with the Democratic National Committee on to run on this, but it needs to be broad. People need to be shouting it from the rooftops because this is the one of the biggest threats um, to Joe Biden being reelected is these third party candidates. If you look at Michigan, Mika, and I know uh, Sen uh, Alicia, Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on later. I almost called her yeah. senator. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on <laughs> later. Michigan is a state where RFK, I think, is polling at 10 percent. Right. And so this is a place where Joe Biden needs to win. And RFK Jr. is making a real threat to that. So it's good we're talking about it. It is a real threat. They're aware of it. But more needs to be done and more people need to be talking about it and aware. And these people are dripping in, elit in elitism, you know, like the way that she talks about Georgia makes me sick. I'm from yeah. Georgia. I'm sorry. That's right. Because we don't know how to read there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're right. just so dumb, Jen. We don't know how to like get our news. Oh. Oh, we're so stupid. We don't know <laughs> that Kennedy, like we don't know anything about him. We just love the name so much. And so we're just going to like pull the lever for him. Cause we're like, Oh, we love the Kennedys from the days of your God. She's just, they're so like, they just, they're God, they're the biggest bunch of elitist asshats. And they look down on everybody. Like if you don't live in New York or Washington, then you're just a Hilljack. I hate those people. Like, seriously, I kind of wish he would start suing everybody that calls him an anti-vaxxer because he is absolutely positively not an anti-vaxxer. And I don't know how many times he needs to make that clear. He's made it abundantly clear. He just wants them to be tested. And so and he's vaccinated all of his kids. Well, so what about what about when conspiracy they call him that he and should sue. I think he and a conspiracy do. theorist to boot. He's also a conspiracy theorist. So they they paint him as a complete wackadoodle. But everybody's a wackadoodle, right? I mean, everybody <laughs> but Biden is a wackadoodle to these people. That's the thing. Listen, I'm not sticking up for Kennedy. It's like, he, but the thing is, they are so scared of that guy because he actually is is smarter than their guy. He is. No, he's, there's no question about he's that. He's smarter and more capable than Biden. My great Dane is smarter and more <laughs> capable than Biden. So they should be scared. They should be scared of everybody else running than their guy, who is a complete and total loser. So they should be scared. The fact that she actually stumps for that guy should, I mean, she should be embarrassed that she's doing that, that she wants Joe Biden to have four more years. Like, what is wrong with you? Oh, my God. But I just, well, and that's not to say there's still a big question mark. Somebody made some snide comment about, oh, see, Mock's wrong again because RFK is going to pull more votes from Biden than Trump. We don't know that. We no, absolutely do not know that. There's no just guarantee. Just because Jen Psaki is concerned about it does not mean all of a sudden I'm wrong. There is not a soul on the planet that knows how RFK Jr. is going to impact this election yet mm -hmm. until it's over. So. Yeah. F off. Well, it's well, we don't. What if there is a debate? We don't know if there's going to be a debate. And if there is a debate and say there, you know, just hypothetically say there's a debate between the three of those guys. I'm just putting yeah. that out there. And it's, you know, RFK, Biden and Trump. I, I have no idea what that's going to look like. I mean, I or what's going to happen to Trump and all of his legal schmeagle stuff between now and then. Right. So much. Mm -hmm. can change. Yeah. Trump should not be sitting on his laurels about RFK no. and neither should Biden. He's a no. threat, period. Across He's, a threat the board. To, He's a threat to everybody. And there are young people in this country who are libertarian slash conservative, you know, who look at RFK and he's been on Joe Rogan and he's done, you know, he's done all the, they think, oh, well, this guy is, he is for freedom. You know, he's, he's this, he's that. They think that he's a certain way. Whereas, you know, listen, Jen Psaki may be saying that he is an anti-vaxxer and he's a conspiracy theorist and he's a nut job. But there are some, I guess, younger people on the right side of the aisle, right-ish, and even mm -hmm. in the middle a little bit, who find him attractive because he is a jacked up kangaroo with some interesting things to say, right? And he's yep. not an old dude. And so they're going to be like, well, he's not old. So I'm going to listen to what he has to say. And he went on Joe Rogan and he did this and he did that. And he's, he's out there killing snakes with his bare hands. So <laughs> I'm going to listen I don't think to he's him. killing them. I okay. Think he's I'm sorry. Picking them up. He's picking them up with his bare hands. So, I mean, he's an interesting <laughs> guy, right? So I, this is the thing. I, I think that there's, 
we sh we should all be concerned about this guy being in the race not because yeah. you know he has not because he's going to be doing great things for us you know but because he has things to say and people are going to find that attractive even on the right side of the aisle i don't but i mean <laughs> he's a kennedy i don't want a kennedy being president but right right um also not to you know throw another wrench into this whole mix um and also by mike you don't get to insult me in my own on my own show so your comments are gone now <laughs> um chris christie is not ruling out i'm not making this up oh my god he is not ruling out a third party run in this election I can't even believe this happened, but he was on a show, a podcast, whatever, with um, David Axelrod. And David Axelrod asks the question, are you considering a third party run? And here is how that conversation went. Is that something that you are considering? You know, I think oh, the way I would look God. at it is. No. I no. will do whatever I can. Oh, my God. To try to make sure that the country doesn't go through what I think will be the misery of a second Trump term. I wouldn't preclude anything at this point, David. We've got a, the most unsettled political terrain we've ever had. Oh, God. It's like, it's like the guy I, that, it's, it's seriously, he's the guy that keeps asking you to prom and you keep saying, no, <laughs> you are disgusting, go away. And he's like, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Right. And you're like, you are stalking me. Stop it. He's stop it, Christy. Stop. He we just can't. No. He he just can't quit us, you guys. <laughs> I just we have said no numerous times. We've said no to you. Take the hint and go away. Oh my he goodness. Won't. He's not taking the hint. He's not. He it's, just will it's not. A and it's exhausting. It is a sickness. How do people like, where do they buy these egos? Like, how do you get to be <laughs> so full of yourself? I don't understand it. Like, is it a, just a, are you born that way? I don't understand. Or is it <laughs> it's something pretty that amazing. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Somebody who just joined is like, why does mock sound that way? I know my mic is broken. I don't know what's Sorry. going on. I'll have to look into it after the show. She didn't know until it's my fault. We it's, you can blame it's it on me. Fault. It's my fault. <laughs> totally my fault you guys <laughs> it's always my fault um, <laughs> you guys if you are not good at get getting your daily fruits and veggies into your system and let's face it there's not a lot of us who are good at getting our daily allowance of fruits and veggies this is your cheat code right here this is field of greens it's a green powder that you just sprinkle into some water or a smoothie or like there's any number of ways to take it, but you just mix it up. I just put it in water because I think it tastes like yummy juice. You mix it up in eight ounces of water, give it a good shake, and you've got yourself a whole bunch of minerals and vitamins from the fruits and veggies that you may not be getting on your own right here in a yummy tasting drink. And this is the wild berry flavor, which tastes to me like blueberry juice, which is super, super yummy. But there's other flavors too, like the lemon and lime, which you love. That's your I favorite. Sweet tea. So, so good. It uses 100% USDA organic fruits and vegetables. Uh, and it's real superfood. It's not a supplement. It works super fast. You will feel increased energy. Some people are even reporting that their uh, doctor's labs look better than ever after they've been on it. So consider taking it. You'll get 15% off your first order plus free rush shipping when you go to Fog chicks.com that's field of greens fog fogchicks.com and use code chicks that'll be the way that you get 15 percent off your first order Try it. Saw, you're gonna love I just, it i just saw a really funny comment from indie odor your <laughs> your mic is probably interference from daisy's over the top dog tracking devices it, it could be <laughs> It could be <laughs> have like 15 tracking devices on video. It, could it probably be. is. Stop screaming in mic. Teresa Raimundo, thank you. She says, I can't wait for the day that I am unburdened by Kamala. Here, I just, we all, here. all want to be unburdened by her. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Shelly, Shelly Eppington, thank you. Shelly says, they say conspiracy theorists like it's a bad thing. It just means that people actually think for themselves and ask questions. The difference between truth and conspiracy is about six months. <laughs> it's so true. Isn't it weird it's how so all the true. conspiracies come true? Yeah. Yeah. 
and then and everybody's all the Babylon like, B headlines they come like, true. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. It's weird how they just stop. They stop talking about how it's a conspiracy when they all come true. Mm hmm. <laughs> Um, I can already tell that today is going to be a long show because we are barely into all of the news and it's already 45 I minutes love it. in. <laughs> so I love it when Friday's a long show. Buckle in, you guys. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, let's get to what happened at the El Paso border because there, I don't, I don't even know how people can watch the video that you're about to see and say, this isn't an invasion. I don't know what else you would, how else you would characterize an invasion except for something that looks like this. They just bust through the wall. Why can't we start shooting? What is I'm the scary. National Guard there for if right. not to shoot? I, exactly. I mean, I know that I, I hesitate to say that out loud, but I don't. I just don't understand why they can't start shooting. Isn't that? Look at this. It's unbelievable. It's an invasion. <laughs> Oh my God. God, it just makes me so mad. And so here's Kamala. We did it, we did it Joe. <laughs> I mean, you have to laugh because if not, you'll cry. I it, it, honestly, it, yeah, I, somebody said they're not armed. Bob said they're not armed. Uh, okay, well, they the should National be. The National Guard? They should be. Is that right? If, they, if they're not, uh, I, yeah, it is crazy. They should be armed and they should be shooting. And you know what? It's that an one... attack. It is an invasion. Exactly. Like, that's what they're there for. And if they did, then people that would deter people. Exactly. <laughs> I just, F-A-F-O, man. I'm just so sick of this crap. Good Lord. Yeah, it is Alana, like World War Z. It's like sharks, World War Z. Remember? Remember the, World... the zombies like climbing the wall in World War Z? Remember? In yeah. Israel, they were climbing the wall. Yeah, it's exactly what it reminded me of. It's so true. I don't... If, if that's not an invasion, I would like to know what exactly is, because mm -hmm. that's what I picture when I see an invasion in my mind. That's what it looks like. Hey, you know what I we should do? We should totally arm these people in Illinois. We should do that. <laughs> it's a great idea, yeah. isn't it? Let's arm Let's them. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> Good um, Lake and Riley's dad uh, gave a speech uh, just to promote and su give support, obviously, to the Lake and Riley bill. Here he is. And this is what you did, Kamala. I mean, it's one thing for us to play a meme of her going, we did it, Joe. Mm -hmm. This is what you did. I stand before you a heartbroken man. God. Part of my purpose has been taken. God gave me a beautiful daughter to father, protect, provide for, and nurture. <sighs> a man with an evil heart stole her life. He was in this country and in this state illegally. Mm -hmm. My vision for every senator in this chamber is that you protect citizens from this illegal invasion. Please recognize over a million illegal aliens are in this state and <sighs> making families nervous. Please recognize Athens Clark is a sanctuary city. And this policy and the lack of action led to the murder of my daughter. There are a few of you in this chamber that are standing up and working on a solution to protect us. For that, my family is thankful. Lakin is thankful. Governor Kemp, please declare an invasion to detain and deport criminal illegals so we can prevent future families from those tragedies. Yeah, Governor Kemp, do your freaking job. Do it. <sighs> Do your so, job. So, 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 yeah. so sad. Your job is to protect citizens, and these people are not doing their freaking jobs. God bless him I and know. that family. I and I just, it just breaks my heart. I know. It's just so, so, so sad. It's God, senseless. It's so Absolutely. It's senseless. All of it. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, there are some, still some crazy people on college campuses protesting the whole Israel. They, they're demanding their colleges call for ceasefires, which, of course, is utterly useless. Even if these colleges were to call for ceasefires, they're not in charge of ceasefiring. OK, that's not what colleges do. But these students are so insane and particularly so. Uh, at Southern Florida University, there is there are 18 students currently at the University of South Florida that have started a hunger strike to protest for the Palestinians. You're about to hear from one of them, who, of course, <laughs> is too cowardly to show her face. Of course. Um, but listen to how dumb this chick is. It's absolutely insanity. Hello, I'm Khadija. Today is day three of the strike. 
for three days, USF has forced us to starve ourselves. Okay. To All right. Is heard. We are relying no, on they the haven't. and water to sustain ourselves. Mm -hmm. I feel malnourished and fatigued. Okay. My body feels weak. Too bad. How can we Eat a burger. USF cares for their student body when they make it abundantly clear they'd rather watch us starve than even meet one of our demands? Okay. Are they waiting for someone to drop dead to take action? It's been three days, via law. <laughs> when will you care about your students as much as you care about your paycheck? Oh, my God. They brag about student diversity while investing in the companies making bombs that kill their family back home. They flaunt mental health resources. Is the genocide in Gaza, in which my university is complicit, helpful to any of our mental health? Oh, my God. As a freshman at this university, I am ashamed. I am ashamed of you, real law. Blah, 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 blah. blah. I mean, she should be ashamed of the picnic blanket on her face. <laughs> Seriously. Like if, if you show your face, show yeah, your face. Yeah. God, what a Shame absolute, up. absolute coward. All these, all these people, these young kids are such cowards. It's like Antifa, mm -hmm. you know, show your face. It they're all the part of the same. I believe all of these people are in, they're all Antifa. All totally. the BLM, Antifa, all of these pro Hamas people, all, all the same. same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just right. ridiculous. Um, my, my name today is for Jessica Tarlov, who has <laughs> embarrassed herself beyond repair, I think, at this point. So y not yesterday, but the day before, um, when she was ranting and raving about how James Comer doesn't have a case, there's no evidence, blah, blah, blah. We played that clip yesterday. Um, she also made a claim that Tony Bobulinski's legal bills are being paid for by a Trump PAC. And the suggestion that she was making is that he's not a credible witness because Trump is paying him to say all the things that he's saying, which is nonsense. But here she is saying it. Tony Bobulinski's lawyer's fees have been paid by a Trump super PAC. Oh, my God. That's as recent as January. Do you think that a guy who's invested in how much better off he wants the United States to be and really getting to the bottom of this would be taking money from the guy who extorted the Ukrainians to get dirt on the Bidens. And we should talk about Lev Parnas, who's the Democratic witness. So that's what she said. And then Tony Bobulinski's attorney immediately wrote a letter and said, you have, this is unequivocally false. It is defamatory. No Trump super PAC has ever paid Tony Bobulinski's legal fees. In fact, he has paid over $500,000 in legal fees to numerous lawyers and law firms out of his own pocket since 2020. God. We write to demand an immediate retraction on air today of this maliciously blatant lie. Let me be perfectly clear. We will immediately file a defamation lawsuit against Fox and Ms. Tarlov if this lie is not retracted by her on air today, March 21st, this was yesterday. Yeah. So I was like, Dying. I, lo I love how they what she was gonna say. I love how they said Fox too, in addition to Tarla, because yeah. you know that her superior, you know that her executive producer was like, oh crap. Yeah, because it <laughs> wasn't just her. You know, she was pulled into a room and they were like, You better correct this, biatch. Because seriously. Well, except that they know because their lawyers are very crafty and they they played this so unbelievably safe and disgustingly so. They obviously, the lawyers at Fox prepared a statement for her to read. They saved it, and I'm not kidding you, until the last 60 seconds of last night's show. The very, very end. They played it at the very, very end, and she simply read the teleprompter in as like robotic of a voice as she could. And it is not a retraction. It is a clarification. Well, then they should sue and her. And I hope that they sue her. I, I hope that they her. continue. Because so this is not, box. it's not an apology. It's not a retraction. It's nothing that they said that they wanted. God, I hope they sue. I really, yeah. really want them to. But here is her quote unquote retraction, which is not a retraction at all. I would like to clarify a comment I made yesterday during our discussion of Tony Bobolinsky's appearance at the congressional hearing. During an exchange with my colleagues about the hearing, I said that Mr. Bobolinsky's lawyer's fees have been paid by a Trump super PAC as recently as January. What was actually said during the hearing was that the law firm representing Mr. Bobulinski was paid by a Trump PAC. I have seen no indication those payments were made in connection with Mr. Bobulinski's legal fees, and he denies that they were. All right, coming up next, a member of the... What's your That's it. 
That's, That's all it. she said. I would I'd sue her. Sue her and sue Fox. I'd sue the crap out of her. Sue everybody. Sue everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, sue, my God. And that guy, I like... That guy's a hero, man. <laughs> he like walks in there with like the big, the biggest balls. <laughs> I just, I would be like, you know, what? and if, if he's paid almost half a million dollars of his own money, like he's had to pony that up. Can you imagine having to do that and then being, like, having this broad with the vocal fry come on a television and saying that you're getting like money thrown at you? I would be live. I would be beside myself. I'd be like, sue her, sue her. I yeah. hope they do. I hope they do. I, I hope, hope they hope, do. Hope, hope, hope they do. Because mm -hmm. that does not qualify, at least in my view, that does nope. not qualify as a retraction. You don't nope. get to say, I'm just clarifying. No, you flat out lied. Yeah. You ag? Yep. Anyway. I, would I would sue her and I'd sue Fox. And of course, still the Democrat spin, hers included, is that there is no evidence of any kind of Biden corruption, which is so absurd. I mean, there's been receipts after receipts after receipts. And so uh, Senator Ron Johnson was on News Nation yesterday to talk about the fact that they keep getting accused of not having anything on the Biden family. Response to his accusation that you helped do the bidding of Russians by digging up dirt on the Bidens. It's an outrageous false accusation. It's actually outrageous. The Democrats would call him as a witness. He's a convicted felon. There is not one word of Senator Grassley's and my reports that is ever proven to be untrue. Our reports are based on U.S. records, bank records, uh, interviews with U.S. persons. Uh, again, our, our report has stood the test of time, has laid the foundation, uh, laid out the evidence of the corruption of the Biden family, and now the House has just added to that record with documentation. Uh, you know, set the, the witnesses aside, just take a look at the bank records. Have the Bidens explain those. Uh, the email records of, of 10 percent for the big guy. And then all of a sudden, Joe Biden gets a forty thousand dollar check from a four hundred thousand dollar uh, disbursement or uh, cash inflow into those accounts. So, again, the the documentary evidence is overwhelming of the corruption of the Biden family. So the, the Democrats can obfuscate. I mean, they can, they can bring in witnesses, the convicted felons that lie. But the truth of the matter is we have the documents that show that the Biden crime family is corrupt and they were peddling influence. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, right. They've got, they got receipts. They have receipts. I swear. I, it's like, th this is the, the dual system of justice. Mm -hmm. We just see it. I mean, ev and can't everybody see it by now? I I can't. I can't understand anyone who can't. I can't. I, know. I, I can't. Well, th those are the people who just don't want it to be so, you right. know, or they're right. rooting. They're rooting so hard for the liberals that they just don't care that our country is now. It's so corrupt. Our country is corrupt that it's like there's one set of rules for the Democrats, another set of rules for the Republicans. And if you're a Democrat, you don't give a shit. Because you think it's great. And that's not okay. Shame on you. God, just it's infuriating. And it just gets worse. Like we were talking about this early, before we went live, that we're getting pummeled in so many ways in from so many different directions. Mm -hmm. We're being overwhelmed by insanity that it's almost like it's too much to bear. You can't begin to fix something because as soon as you go to put out this fire, this other one starts raging or this yeah. volcano explodes. It's whack-a-mole. And, and it feels so definitely by design that they're trying to overwhelm us so that we just retreat. Right. Because they're they're like, if we can just keep piling more horrible things on Americans, then they'll have to, they'll be defeated and then mm -hmm. we can control them and power over them however we want. Right. That's right. what it feels like right and now. Really, and, and really by, not to... Not to insult Americans, because I don't I'm not saying that every American is like this now. I think at least half the country is somewhat strong, but we're weaker as a nation. We're already weaker as a just as a collective. I think that we're not as strong as we you know, I mean, I I look at like we talked about this, too, in pre-show and I tread lightly. But, man, we fought revolutions over less than what we're dealing with now, you know, just from a taxation standpoint. My goodness, yeah. <laughs> it's like I look at what is happening just from an economic standpoint. And we we were way stronger as a people, I mean, a long time ago. So I just look at it. We're just weak. We're weak. We're complacent. We're weak. And we just we're like, ah, it's fine. You know, I've got I got to take my kid to a soccer game. So it's it, I'll just let other people deal with the political side of it. And I'll just pay my taxes and get on with it because we just don't pay much attention. A lot of us don't. A lot of us. 
you know, but some of us do and it, but it's just become so overwhelming because to your point, there are so many things that are right. so bad with our government and so many, there's just so much corruption. It's like, well, how do you fix it? You know, people become so overwhelmed. They just say, well, screw it. I can't do anything. So screw it. You know? Yeah. It's, I, I mean, it does feel so overwhelming and there's another great example um, but Biden's budget that he has submitted is so insane. It's so absolutely insane. Um, and it, it continues to just get worse and worse for the people that are hurt by Bidenomics the most. So now Janet Yellen is saying, she's explaining that part of his budget is to tax people, rich people, on unrealized capital gains, which makes me insane with rage. Um, we'll talk about it as soon as you hear what she I says. I agree with you. Under current law, some of the wealthiest Americans pay very little tax because they receive <laughs> they their income as capital gains, and those capital gains aren't taxed until realized and may escape income taxation entirely at death. So the president's budget would impose a minimum tax of 25% on total God. income, inclusive oh of unrealized capital gains. Our founders are rolling over in their graves. I just can't. I mean, like, mm -hmm. if you just break that down into normal people terms, this mm -hmm. isn't just about the super, super rich. Imagine that your income your total income, according to the IRS, is based on the value of your home, for example, that you have not sold. So that's an unrealized gain. If I, if my house is worth a million dollars, but I bought it for two hundred thousand dollars, that's eight hundred thousand dollars that the government is now going to consider income mm -hmm. of mine that right. they're going to tax, even though I haven't sold the damn house. That's yep. what that means. And so people hear the word unrealized gains and they don't actually realize what that means. Mm -hmm. It's money that these people don't actually have in hand. It's theoretical money that they might make someday yeah. if they choose to sell. And the government oh wants my God. that. And the government wants that the the fake invisible money. <laughs> oh my god. It's like what are we doing? Yeah, this is the thing. I I it's crazy. I like I said, the founders are rolling over in their graves. This is not what they intended for this country. This is not what they wanted. And it, like I said, we fought revolutions for less than this. I mean, it's so everybody's weak or weak. I mean, it's we just kind of go, well, I mean, this is the way that because we are the frogs in the boiling water. We just keep accepting, accepting, accepting. And it's like we keep electing these people that represent us that are total jackholes that don't actually represent us. It's insane. Taxation is theft. <laughs> Teresa Raimundo, thank you. Teresa says, I know I'm behind the show at the moment, but I once fasted for nine days to make wow. weight requirements in the Navy. Three days is a cakewalk. Oh my God. Nine days? Nine How are days. you alive? <laughs> well, I mean, the body can live without food for a really long time. Just obviously you have, you can't live without water. Right, right. Yeah. But uh, wow. Andrea Viola, thank you. Andrea says we're weaker because we were tolerant and spineless. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly right. And it's coming back to bite us and yes. hard. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about Janet Yellen. So remember how, remember when AOC's Green New Deal came out way back in the day, like when we were on radio and we laughed and laughed and laughed at how ridiculous it was. Like how far? And now. Yeah. Yeah, the cow farts. So much of it has been implemented into mm -hmm. Biden policy with respect to climate change. Yeah. So the fact that now she is back on the new Green Deal kick mm -hmm. specific to housing, she and Jamal Bowman, the rest of the squad, you, Bernie. Um, why? Oh, why? <laughs> they are now proposing that the Green New Deal uh, encompass housing. They want there to be rent caps. Uh, because rich people can take care of uh, poorer people's of rent, course. you know, the, the, what they can't make. And they want everybody, everybody is entitled to a home. My God. So when, when they say these things, yes, they sound completely insane and crazy and socialist and commie. But the fact remains that as they continue to grab hold of more and more power, these things start actually happening as we've seen with the climate stuff. And so just yesterday, 
Uh, AOC presented her, you know, housing Green New Deal, and Jamal Bowman started talking about it. Here he is. It is plantation capitalism to have someone paying 40, 50, 60 percent of their salary towards rent. That is plantation capitalism. Rent should be capped at 20 percent of someone's salary. That's where we need to take it. And as we rebuild our cities and as we rebuild our country to ensure that every single person has a home, we need to invest and pass the Green New Deal for public house. Right. Absolutely. It deals with the issue of unemployment and underemployment. It deals with the issue of the climate catastrophe that we are living in, and it deals with the issue of lack of affordable housing in our country. As the senator said, win, win, win. This is not winning. It's just not winning. Yeah. I mean, they can't see it. They'll never stop. They'll never stop until we are a socialist, like a full on socialist country. And have they not learned from looking at other socialist countries, how well that works out for them, you know, and there's no place, there's no place else to go. Like, this is the thing. Like we are the beacon. We were the beacon on the Hill. Right. And I mean, there's, where else do you escape to? Because everybody wants to come here, right? Everybody did want to come here. They're all coming here for a reason. And then when we become a socialist suck nation, because we're heading that way, where do where do you escape to, you guys? Tell me, where do you go? I don't. Oh I don't. My God. It's just <laughs> like again, it's overwhelming. It's like they're coming at at every angle. Right. They're trying to come at, at us from every mm-hmm. angle so that we can't focus on something and deal with it because there's so freaking much. And I mean, it, oh my God, it's it's just, it's terrifying. And then we've got Democrats who just completely deny the fact that they have criminals among them. So I know we've played a, a clip a couple weeks ago of Chuck Schumer being asked by a reporter, hey, Menendez has done some shady shit. When are you getting rid of that clown? And Chuck Schumer is like, well, we're just very disappointed in him. We can give him a little hand slap and then put him on some more committees. And so he he's getting pestered about this with good reason. And yet he continues to say this and reporters don't push back. Called or move to expel Senator Menendez, considering how abhorrent you think his conduct has been. As I've said, uh, the Senate has certain standards and Menendez fell way below it. We're deeply disappointed in him. <laughs> but we're but we don't care. But he's going to stay I and mean, we don't care. Yeah, we should try this as Republicans, right? Should we try this? How do you how do you say, well, he hasn't been convicted of anything, and so that's your justification for keeping him, but then also say that you're extremely disappointed. Either he did the thing or he didn't do the thing, but like you can't how are you having it all the ways? Because you're Democrats. <laughs> that's how right. That's how. That's how you do it. I mean, can you imagine us doing this? Can you imagine Republicans? Doing- We're just deeply disappointed. We're so we're disappointed. Just, we're just really disappointed. Can you imagine doing this with your kids if they did really bad things, you know, like super bad things and you didn't actually discipline them, but you were just like, I mean, it's fine that you're doing crack, but we're just like deeply disappointed, but run along and <laughs> just run along. I mean, oh no, my God. You, you, you discipline, you like, you hold people accountable, you discipline, and then you like make them suffer the consequences. That's what you do. You don't just go, oh, I'm deeply disappointed in you. Really? I mean, okay. That's like, he cares that they're deeply disappointed. Like he gives a crap. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Whatever. <laughs> Meantime, he's still getting like a paycheck. <laughs> and committee assignments and classified intel. Right. I mean, it's, it's just And insane. a pension. Yeah. And Andrea, thank you again. Andrea says Republicans are the communists destroying the country. If Americans agree to being taxed on money you did not earn, you're agreeing to slavery. I mean, I know, but it's like easier said than done, right? Like it's easier to easy to say, I'm not going to pay my taxes. And then you're going to go to jail. You know what I mean? We're, we are, we're in such a horrible position because we, Mm -hmm. unless everybody agrees, unless like half the country agrees that we're not going to pay taxes. And how do you get people to do that? How do you get people to all, this is the thing, a lot of rule followers on our side of the aisle, you know what I mean? But unless we have like an actual 
collective effort where we just say, okay, we're not going to, okay, you guys ready and go. And we don't do it. What are they going to do? They're going to throw us all in jail. You know what I mean? They can't do that, but no, people won't do it. People just won't do it. So, you know, um, I don't know about you guys, but I was today years old when I learned that representative Jayapal has a trans kid. Raise your hand if you're shocked by this news. <laughs> I'm so shocked. So, so incredibly shocked. Yeah. Isn't it stunning? Mm, I mean, it's, it's absolutely stunning. Yeah. Just so shocked. Look anyway, I just thought face. that was of is that interest. A, is that, was that person born a male or female? A male. Uh, male. Okay. And now it's now. Now it's, it's a female. Well, I mean, he's still male, but living as a trans girl trans woman. Okay. So. All right. I just Good didn't luck. know that. And I figured I'm not the only one that doesn't know that. So now you all know it too. Good luck with that. And I, and I actually <laughs> brought up the thing this morning. I was like, I bet you that there's not a father that's very present in the home, but then we learned that there is a father that's present in the home, but the father is very squishy. Very squishy. Mm -hmm. Very, very squishy. Again. I mean, we're just basing that on appearance alone. Yeah. But, but, but we do that. We totally do that. <laughs> and I'm again, I'm shocked. Shocked. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. John Newbaum. Thank you. John says, Daisy to squatters in her house after coming home from a weekend swim meet. Quote, I'll see your squatters rights and raise you my 2A rights. Not that we condone <laughs> violence on this no, show. We don't, we don't <laughs> violence. But that is exactly what would happen in my house. Yeah. And they would never know they were even here. <laughs> you <would> never know. <laughs> we got a property. They would never know. It's fine. Um, there are some juicy rumors floating around Twitter this morning, uh, at least there were before the show started, that Candace Owens has been fired from the Daily Wire. This rumor was started, I believe, by Gavin McInnes. I don't know if it's true, but there's a, a lot of rumbling about it. And so I suppose we'll hear clarification or confirmation from the Daily Wire today, because they're not just going to let this rumor run, run rampant without addressing it, I'm sure. But before even that happened, um, we were set to play you this clip of Dave Rubin on the Patrick Bet David show, where he's specifically talking about Candace Owens wanting to be fired from the Daily Wire. This is a very interesting take. Take a listen. There's, there's many layers to this. Let, let's just remove the Israel layer for a Fine. second. There, there's a pure business layer to it, which is that Candace has a contract with Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. I know nothing. I truly know nothing about the nature of the contract or the, how long it lasts or how much it's for or anything else. But it seems fairly obvious to me she wants to leave the Daily Wire. And I would say there's a little bit of the Tucker thing here, too which Tucker is building a network. He now has the Tucker Carlson network. He's gone after Ben, I would say, in a fairly unfair way. Um, repeatedly going after Ben's motives, saying he doesn't love America, things like that. Who? Tucker. Tucker, yeah. Right. Ben right. has repeatedly, he did it on my show, he's done it on his show, said, I'll be happy to sit down with you. I've offered to moderate it, but you could moderate it. They don't even need a moderator. I think it would be a good conversation to have. You can have difference of opinion on, say, foreign policy or, or any political issue without going after someone's motives or saying they don't love America, that sort of thing. But... At a business level, Tucker now has a network that is in competition. He's building a network now that is in competition with the Daily Wire. So it would be pretty great to take out Ben Shapiro. That's just reality. You think right? that's what it is? I, I think that there is an element of that. I'm really I mean, that's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. There's so much drama. You know, so much drama, even in that, because that clip went on, obviously, I mean, he was on the show for a while, but even in, even when I was trying to cut that down to a, a normal size clip, there was a, a little piece afterwards where he clearly indicated that he and Candace used to be close and they no longer are. So, and I don't know what the falling out is, but he said, Candace and I used to be friends and that means that they're not anymore. She's alienating a lot of people. Yeah. This is why I'm glad that we're not at that level. Right? And that I'm glad that we're just we kind of stay below the fray. The fray? Yeah, and we're we're like the Romy and Michelle of conservative media. We yes. we sit at our own little lunch table and nobody really lets us sit at the big lunch tables. We just we like <laughs> sitting at our little lunch table because I just don't want to be part of all of that drama. You know, I don't like it. It's just not my thing. It's too many too much infighting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a lot. It yeah. is a lot. So we'll yep. see. I'm sure that there'll be more news about uh, about that 
rumor of her being fired or not fired mm -hmm. from Daily Wire. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, Tim Griffiths, thank you. Tim says, me and my homies would have been stacking bodies by now, George Washington. <laughs> That is not a paraphrase. I'm pretty sure that he's saying that from the grave. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, we talked about Neuralink. There, of course, Elon Musk uh, successfully, I mean, he didn't, but like his Neuralink was successfully transplanted into its first human subject. What was this like? I don't know, two months ago, I yeah, think about at this that. point. Mm -hmm. And now that guy has been revealed. He's a quadriplegic uh, who suffered an accident and is now <laughs> using this Neuralink. He cannot move any part of his body beneath the head down. Um, and so he was talking about how he uses Neuralink to play chess with his mind. And this is pretty extraordinary. It became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Um, basically, it was like... Uh, using the force on the cursor <laughs> and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where I wanted it to, yeah, um, really which was amazing. such a wild. That is amazing. It, right. really, it is. It's just cool. It really is cool that he can do that. I just, I don't want this technology to be used for evil. You know what I mean? I know. For that kind of purpose, it's, it's incredible. Oh, it's but. just amazing. It's just truly amazing that that is possible and that man can do that. That's awesome, right? But I'm like, okay, okay, humanity, don't let me down. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? I know it. Don't let me down, okay? Because you've let me down before. <laughs> don't let me down, all right? You've jumped a few sharks jumped in your day. <laughs> a lot of sharks. Let's not... <laughs> Let's not do that in this particular incident. Let's not, let's just stay right here and like help the people. Let's just help people and not hurt people. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, there's a picture that's gone viral of Bruce Springsteen on oh socials God. because you guys, what, what is even happening What's, here? It, people say he looks like Tilda Swanson. <laughs> Swinton? Tilda Swinton? Is it Swinton? Twins? Twinson? What, Tilda whatever her name is. That <laughs> that albino looking lady. You know what I'm talking about? She's like a model. Oh yeah, I know exactly. She's a He's model. He's 74. So I, there's something going on that doesn't seem natural. Well, yeah. <laughs> he, looks, he looks like AI. He looks like <laughs> some sort of grandma AI is happening there. I don't know. It's really Tilda Swinton. Thank you, Kit Kat. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's alarming. I mean, listen, alarming. everybody everybody ages. I get it, but it, the the chest is a little weird. It looks like something is is um yeah, unnatural. Like what exactly here. is happening? Like, and is why, it implants? What's yeah, and why on? does he, why does he have it open like that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like no. close it up, Bruce. Close it up. Put that Lock away. Up. Nobody Put that wants to see away. That. And is he eating meat? Like, I feel like sometimes when people go vegan, you know what I mean? They start, remember when Robert Downey Jr. came out and he was like, hey, I've been vegan for like the past six months. And then he was like, he looked like this. Remember? Not yeah. just, listen, if you're a vegan, I'm not trying to dish you. I was vegan for a year and my hair fell out. It was bad. I just, <laughs> it was not a good thing for me personally. It may work for some people, but I'm just saying for some people end up looking like this and then you give them the whole chicken and they immediately look okay you know it looks like a, the wax museum version of himself right you know what i mean yeah it just looks not real how old is he but anyway how, how old is he 74 he's 74 i mean i yeah this is the thing i I've, i swear i saw him just like a year ago and he looked like a normal person I know. I, that's why this picture has gotten so much it's, attention. It's because alarming. It's just so bizarre. It's very, very bizarre. Mm -hmm. um, also, there is a new kind of sexuality, uh, or maybe not new, but it's new to me. Really? And this clip comes from that naked dating show from the UK. Um, and this person is an eco-sexual. So if you don't know what that is, you're about to learn. <laughs> Because this is important for you to know. <laughs> kind of. I'd say I'm more an ecosexual. What is an ecosexual? <laughs> who finds nature sexy. Oh, I know. <laughs> She's having sex with nature. This is a growing movement that treats nature as a sensual partner. Oh and over 100,000 people now identify as ecosexual worldwide. 
how a person expresses their ecosexuality ranges widely. From ceremonies where you can marry Mother Nature, oh, to sex with God. trees, and what? even masturbating under waterfalls. <laughs> I, I just... The people are... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said people are humping trees. Yeah, they are. Just that's what they're doing. It's time for Jesus to come back. It's just time. <laughs> it's time. We, yeah, talk about sharks getting jumped. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh you see God. what I did there? Sharks getting jumped. Eco, <laughs> get it, get it. See what I did there? I'm tracking now. Mm -hmm. Tracking. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you guys. Oh my god. Anyway, that's uh that's a new thing. Um, it is time for your DV. We could have done without the ecosexuals. Okay. <laughs> could but, we, um, uh, yeah. Didn't we need that today? <laughs> <laughs> we needed it's better than sex robots, that's for sure. We used to spend a lot of time on those in our radio days. All right, so you guys, this is proof that your kids emulate you. They really, really do. They emulate you. <laughs> This little boy, I cannot. He's following his pregnant mommy around. I love him. Look at him. <laughs> Can you take? Look at him. Mom, look. I'm just like you. Uh. So cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I mean, is that not the That's cutest adorable. thing? That little boy. Oh my God. Just want to eat him up. So cute. <laughs> so cute. Uh, Marcus Drake, thank you. Marcus says, who else spotted the penis mushroom at the start of that video? Yeah. And then there was like a whole person that was, that her breasts were the mountains. Did you see I that? I actually didn't. I didn't because I'm not pervs like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fox and like, oh, James. I saw the penis mushroom. I saw it. <laughs> and <laughs> and James that. Heinzman, James Heinzman, <laughs> thank you. He says, what the hell? Look out for splinters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a concern yeah, when you're like, eco you know, get out of places you don't want those. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, you guys, it is time for some my pillow talks. And I'd like to share my screen with you because we have very exciting news about what's happening in their clearance section. Oh my God. First of all, when you go to mypillow.com slash chicks and use code chicks, um, start there. There's obviously a ton of stuff that's for sale right now, including the Giza dream sheets. But then when you toggle on over to, clearance, to the clearance yeah. side, mm -hmm. if you are someone like me who loves Buffalo plaid, and I love Buffalo plaid. And like me who loves Christmas. It's like the best of all the worlds. Look, right. a tree skirt and matching stockings. I mean, how cute are, are they? Dirt cheap right now. Look how cute. Look at that. I know they're we saw so that this cute. morning. We had to show you guys. They have like all, and they have different, they, listen, they have two different patterns. I kind of like the other pattern too, but they're super cute. I mean, but look, look how the cheap one. they are, you guys. I get Christmas decorations like right now on sale. Look how cute. I'm going to, where, where's the other, aren't they cute? All of these things. I'm going to close all that out. Pattern. With the other pattern. <gasps> I like, I like that's another, so cute. I like that one even better. I think that's super cute. I'm so going to buy this. I'm serious. Cause you know, oh I have like 18 God. trees in my house. So I just think they're really cute. And I mean, that's a great, yeah. So it's a when great you price. use promo code chicks, it's less than $20 for the tree skirt. It's like mm -hmm. 12 bucks for the stockings right. that I match. I mean, this is amazing. So, so you should totally check that out. People don't even realize they have For this. We should do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're not checking, you should be checking that website on the daily, honestly, because there's always such great stuff. Um, okay. Let's get to some talks. I'm going to make, I think, a bit of an executive decision that we are not yeah. going to have a schlong today. Okay. Because... Uh, the reason for that is because I know that our production team will be like, your sound sucks. And it's yeah, they, pointless. And that so, is a really great point. Yeah, I can already, our executive producer guy is probably already screaming right now. I, I, I the trouble that I'm going to get in after oh, the show. So much, so much trouble. It's bad. It's right. going to be bad. And it's not my fault. I did. I did it's mine. What's going on. Well, it's, it's your fault. It's my fault. We will figure it's, it out. Uh -huh. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> I'll be the one who gets in trouble, you guys. It's my fault. <laughs> Always. All right. Um, there's a lot of great, great stuff today to get to. One of the things that I wanted to get to yesterday, which was so, so fun, uh, is you know how much I love the pranks, right? So there's yes. this guy. 
<laughs> there's this guy that just walks around streets and like as he's passing people he'll all of a sudden go <gasps> and like pretend that there's something either falling or there's something up oh above God, that's him so that's mean. terrifying so and the mean. reaction of everybody is my favorite He's so mad. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So mad. So mad. Look <laughs> She like left her purse there. Look at that. On the ground. <laughs> Mark it's so loves mean, but I love it. She loves love this it. stuff. It's so mean. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> Other people love it. There's a lot of people that are right with me. Oh, they my gosh. It. <laughs> so mean. Um, if you are a person with a vagina. <laughs> I can barely get that out. It sounds so ridiculous to say it that it way. It does sound ridiculous. It does. <laughs> <laughs> but if you possess a vagina, yes. here is a PSA, um, and it's an important one. This okay. is not something that's happened to me personally, but okay. I can only imagine it would not be fun. Listen. Quick PSA to anyone with a vagina. If you ever find that you've run out of toilet paper and you reach for the tissues, maybe check to see if it has Vicks. Oh, no. This girl is on fire. Quick PSA <laughs> to anyone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's, that's never happened. I don't want that to no. ever happen. Oh my gosh. But also I love her for seeing this girl is on <laughs> That's hysterical. Anyway, just be careful if you're yeah. reaching for the tissue paper. And Puffs plus. You don't want those anywhere you near, don't know. near you don't your want hoo-ha. That. You don't want it near mm -hmm. your hoo-ha. No. Incidentally, um, and I know that like septic systems or whatever, like they do, this is frowned upon, but I remember back in the COVID hysteria when there was no toilet paper, I, I just thought, well, I'm just going to buy extra Kleenex and just use that. And I mean, there was always an abundance of Kleenex. And so it was never a problem. So I never had the same freakouts <laughs> that people did because I was like, I'm fine. I'll just use tissue. It's, it's, it's all the same stuff, right? I feel like, like it really is. It, it is the same, isn't it? It's totally the same. I feel like it's the same. Mm -hmm. So right. just FYI, if mm -hmm. we ever have another toilet paper shortage, just somebody buy yourself just, some cleanup. Somebody just said VIX for chicks. No, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. Um, I know that you'll agree with me on this, that there are some dogs, especially puppies, that are so precious and they look at you with such love that it literally makes you cry. Yes. That is this puppy. Oh my God. I can't believe I'm uh, this dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, just stares. Look at that look. Watch. Now you're going to cry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> See? <laughs> I, know. I mean, they really are so sweet, oh, aren't they? Look at the beans on that dog. You, you've you never had a puppy. You've no, never I'm had one. Puppy. You're like, I think Mock is afraid oh, of, of everything that comes with a puppy because, you know, they make messes and all that kind of stuff. She likes to have built-in dogs that are potty trained and everything. She's yeah. never experienced the awesomeness of a puppy. Like, you've got to have a puppy at some point. That's maybe, like maybe someday. Oh my God, Ma, it's like a rite of passage. It's like having a baby. You've got to have a puppy. Like <laughs> they're so great. Like, and it goes so fast. I mean, it's like you don't sleep for like a couple months. Big deal. Whatever. You get over it. Like puppies are fantastic. I've had so many puppies, and it's it's like there's nothing like it. They're so fantastic, right? You guys, right? The smell, the love, the goodness. Puppies are. You have to have one. You of all people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I could have that puppy specifically, I would uh, love to have that puppy. That I puppy. Mean, oh, God. I just love just that the dog. Best. They're the best. And then that, you know, that puppy is going to grow up just because of the way it looks right now. It's going to grow up into one of those gentle eaters like this one. <laughs> a strawberry? A strawberry? He's so gentle. 
Oh my God. I will never tire of this dog. I will and the never drooling, tire of it. And the drooling. <laughs> oh my God. It's unbearable. It's just. The and the dog thing eats ever. strawberries. I don't think my dog would eat strawberries. I think my dogs would eat just about anything. Really? If, if I gave them the chance. Yeah. Absolutely. Positively. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, yes, this is a great question. And like, if you saw, if you, you would never buy, nobody in here would ever buy a used mattress, right? Cause gross. No, that's gross. But this guy's making a very good point. Hey, can somebody explain to me why we can't even give away a used mattress, but we'll spend $300 a night to sleep on one in a hotel. It's true. So true. Make it make sense. I mean, he's I can't. Got a, I he's can't got a make point. that make sense. He's got a point. <laughs> he has a really good point. I mean, how? What? See, like that's a really good that, and that's about as used of a mattress. Oh you're my gonna god! See. Oh yeah, you know what I'm used. saying? It's been used, bouncing <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah, you're that's right. The thing. More than one owner. That's yeah. It's gross. He's got to. I, mean, I can't well, argue that. I can't. That's a good point. Um, I don't know what to do with that point, but it is a good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I, I know we've shown a clip of this family before, I, and I don't understand the circumstances. I've not researched this family to, to understand why they have so many chihuahuas. I don't, I don't know. Um, but the, <laughs> watching this number of chihuahuas sleeping on one person is extraordinary. What? That one is the shakes. Yeah, that one had the shakes. There, there's so many. But oh my like, God. Look at that. what is even happening? Why? That's just kind of weird. They have that many. Can you imagine what that house <gasps> smells like? I mean, I've got three dogs and I have to watch the smell in my house. I can't imagine all those dogs in that house. Honestly. There's so many. And they're all on him. How do you know all the names of those dogs? I couldn't keep it. I couldn't keep track. Look at how tired some of them are. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at that one in the front. He's all derpy. I mean, Chihuahuas that's by nature, they're pretty derpy. Yeah, they're pretty derpy. I mean, that's just, too, I'm sorry, but that's way too many. Wow, that cool. is. It is. And they're yeah, kind of mean. Chihuahuas can, be, Chihuahuas can be mean. I'd be afraid they would eat me in the middle of the night. Like they'd kill me and eat me. You know, <laughs> it would be like a revolt. There's too many, too many. There's also a chick that I, she's very, very popular, like has over a million followers, I guess. And she had her grandmother, who is very woke, on her podcast or oh. her show. Okay. And very, very interesting uh, catching of her grandmother in the hypocrisy that is so common among woke people. How old are your granddaughters? They are six and eight. Would you support them to get hormone blockers to become the other gender? I would absolutely support them to get hormone blockers. The idea of one of my granddaughters learning that they're going to start having their period if they don't get their hormones blocked, even though they're identifying and portraying as a male. How horrible that would be. So yes, definitely. If your granddaughter came to you and wanted to get a tattoo, what would you say? That would be more difficult. I always told my, oh my sons, God. one thing I ask is please don't get tattoos. Really? Why Why tattoos? There's just something so perfect permanent about it. Permanent? Oh my God. It's pretty permanent. It's very difficult to get them lasered off or removed. You don't think it's like permanent to change your gender? How old? Are you? Oh my God. <laughs> How can you be that old and that stupid? I know. Like, How? Wow. That was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, you think you grow really out amazing. of that stuff, but apparently you don't grow out of it. Wow. Mm -mm. Put grandma on a home. Right? <laughs> Good Lord. Um, this video plays Sarah McLaughlin's angel in the back in the, uh, you know, the humane yeah. society angel song. Uh -huh. So I'm going to mute it, but just know that it's playing. Okay. When yeah. you see this talk. <laughs> For just 47 cents a day, you can support Stella, whose mom abandoned her for six minutes to fold laundry. <laughs> <laughs>
It's so true. Oh my God. Bless her heart. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I love that dog. I, I freaking know. love those, those. My dogs, I love my, so my dogs follow me everywhere. If I go to the bathroom, oh, yeah. they have to come into the half bath with me. You guys have no idea what it's like to have two great Danes and a, and a great Pyrenees mix follow <laughs> you into a half bath. <laughs> it's I, I can't. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I think this guy speaks for a lot of people who will, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't actually often make videos like in my car to talk about how I'm seeking kindness in the world, but a lot of people do. <laughs> and so this is what it's really like. Let me make sure the sound gets back on. an amazing day. I'm super fucking bitch. I'm super <laughs> grateful. Today is going to be an amazing day. Oh my God, that's, that is Miriam. Oh, that is you. So me. It's Just so crazy. you. That is it's absolutely so is. you. Without I mean, it questions. absolutely is. Uh -huh. Absolutely is. Like, oh, I just I want to make sure I say thank you to the locals, uh, people, genius, the first sensitive, saying an army would not shoot us, so they're bringing in an army that will. Our army would not shoot, so they're right. bringing in an army that will. I agree with that. And then, yeah, and that's not my name. Also sent a tip saying, today is the 11th anniversary that I earned my gold star. I miss my son daily, but today is different. Just raise us up in your prayers. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. So many oh prayers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's unbearable. That is unbearable. Mm -hmm. um, Jose Rodriguez. Thank you. Jose said, ecosexual brings new meaning to morning wood. Jose, seriously, uh, Jose. I don't even know. I don't even know. I got to meet Jose. You got to come to our meet and greet. <laughs> we got to give oh you all God. the high fives. Seriously. <laughs> and John Newbaum, John <laughs> says, after dealing with the squatters, Daisy would sing a take on Won't Back Down. I will stand my ground. Do I sound <laughs> like Lara? I would. I probably would not. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> I would not sing it like her. Oh that's my God. For sure. I would just play some Tom Petty. I would just play it. There you go. No, that's there what I go. would do. And, and Judy Judy Flackney says it's a rescue. He knows every name. Talking about those um uh Wow. I mean I, the Chihuahua. I name. The yeah, the Chihuahuas. The Chihuahuas. <laughs> it's funny because you know, you can do that. I know you can do it because we have rancher friends who have like hundreds of they have a hundred plus head of cattle out there on their property and she knows all the names of the cattle that's amazing it is crazy. amazing so you can do it i guess there are people that can do that but i would not be capable wow. of doing that yeah exactly um i do have a couple gifts that i want to thank people for Yay. but we'll bring it in for people that oh, don't want to stay in? for okay. that all right we're yeah, bringing it bring it in. Bring it in. it's a friday hug you guys <sighs> It's Friday. a big one to get you through the weekend. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so thank you, obviously, to Via. You mentioned Via yesterday. Via sent yep. me the same things, the trail mix, the treats, oh, the amazing cookie decorating oh kit. She's just too much. Thank you so much for that. Is. So lovely. Um, somebody, I don't know who or why I received this book, but I got this book. And I'm a little freaked out, honestly. <laughs> this is the book. <laughs> okay. I did not get that. So you were the I lucky one to get it. No, there's no name attached mm -hmm. to it. Just came to my P.O. box. That is freaky. I don't okay. like horror stories. I'm probably not going to read it. I'm sorry to whoever sent this, but this is not the that kind of literature that I'm a fan scary. of. The face is scaring me. Okay. But I appreciate the, the gesture. Um, I, thank you. That whoever sent that, unless okay. you were just sending it to be like creepy and weird and and mean, and in which case, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> um, Beth Nicholson, thank you very much for the Cheesecake Factory gift card. That was very very sweet. That's so nice. And then so nice. And Susan Laux and her dog Sophie and Mo Belly Moo, they sent a check for Ella's vet bills. Oh my gosh, people! I mean. I don't even understand. I don't even the goodness in this community, I the know. generosity. I know. It's like I don't. I've never seen anything like it. I'm. We're always amazed by it. You and yeah. I are always just like, what? Totally. The hell? Like when I went it's through the incredible. cash stuff, and when I went through the Theo stuff. I mean, people were just like, oh, let me help. I mean, I just. 
It's unbelievable. Unmatched. You guys are unmatched. Like there's no For other real. community like you guys. This is, I swear, I, like nobody is like us, you know? Yeah. This is the thing. Like, like, when, we went, like when we went on Glenn Beck and when we, we go on these other shows, we can't even like convey to them what you guys are like, you know? Cause they don't have audiences. They don't have people. They don't have communities like, uh, like ours, you know? Yeah. We're just, I don't know. We're like in a class, all of our own, you know, you guys are the bomb. I love our class. I do too. I love our, class. I love our lunch table. <laughs> our lunch table rocks. The best. Oh, Mary was asking the title of the book. Um, it is George Floyd creepy pastas volume one. And it says 50 plus breathtaking horror stories. Oh man. Horror stories. Oh, I don't like those. Um, yeah. I don't like horror movies. I don't like horror stories. I don't like horror. I don't like that. Oh, horror. At all. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. again, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking maybe, to get horse in the mouth. I'm just, thank you for the gesture. I just, that's wow. I'm, maybe you can find somebody in your know. life that likes horror. Horror. Perhaps. I, that word is always well, fun to say. Horror. Horror. It's like yeah. rural. Also yeah, very rural hard to say. horror. <laughs> and if you really like, some people like rural horror. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody for the lovely, lovely gifts. So I should probably it. should I get a dog? Uh, there's all the dogs are here. Yes, so they're all going to run in. They're all going to run. Okay, in but that's in. fine. Everybody all wants right, to hold see. on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm really sorry about my sound today, you guys. Well, I'll get it sorted out. I promise. You see him? that's not the one that flaps hey come that's here not the flapper can you can you just can you just say hello to everybody oh, okay. <laughs> okay okay it's oh my god you see it you guys see <laughs> no! it it's please it. do not show that look every like him, and that grosses it's... me out oh my god coda would like to say hello to everybody and have a great weekend <laughs> and um i'm gonna go wipe this off <laughs> We will talk to you guys on Monday. Oh, everybody. Okay, everybody. Oh. Okay, everything's shaking. Okay, you guys have a good one. Oh, God. Oh, God. Bye. Bye. Bye.